Hi, I'm Exesis, and we're playing the German Empire in the Great War Redux mod for Hearts of Iron 4. And, uh, well, let's just uh, keep going, right? So we've managed to create a small salient, or a salient, it's actually an encirclement, with uh, another one of the uh, railway guns, the French railway guns. So let's uh, close this one out, as uh, best we can. Let's uh, grab these four divisions, they can help that assault, and these two can help with this one. Should have no problem whatsoever locking that down. Now here we have three tiles we would like to enter. I'm thinking this one might be harder to break. That one uh, might not be a river crossing, we'll see. And we will throw our four divisions we have standing here into this tile. Um, actually, that is a rubbish division. I think our... Uh, these, these are fresh and they've got lots of organization. Let's move those in and we'll just move this division up to help defend this area. I think we need to help out with that assault and we will do the same thing from there and there and we will help out there at the last of the at the end of the last episode we started to reconstitute this gabler division uh, it's actually if we get rid of that we should be if we do it that way it ends up the so it should show up there too, but oh well. Uh, it's the first Panzer Division. Uh, not that much, but we do have medium tank battalions. I'm gonna swap these armored cars out for light tanks and probably one of the medium tank ones too. So we have uh, four light and two medium. I think that's gonna be a good composition to switch all of these over to. Uh, just make really cheap light tanks, of course, to fill out the divisions. They are mainly here for their breakthrough, of course. Uh, when this division is fully reconstituted, we should be about at about 120 or so. Maybe actually a little bit more, depending on where we end up. But the division design calls for 116, plus whatever bonuses the leaders give us. And then we can start to swap over the motorist divisions as we produce more tanks. We did manage to cross the sign here. So I think we will keep on going here. Attack into the forests of Cayenne. And I think we actually want to move all of our motorized across the river here. Or the, uh, the six divisions we have there. Let's see what we have here. We've got uh, another trait we can give him. There's nothing that we do want to give him though. I think these are just preferred tactics, and this is on the that's obviously going to be breakthrough. That's on our uh, one of our offensive generals. Now we've got one on the sign there. Our garrison divisions, new traits. Yeah, nothing we can give there. Preferred tactic. Uh, wow, yeah, that's a lot of experience. He's probably the one that's uh, defending down in Africa. We've been under absolute constant assault in uh, both areas. So uh, let's give them a backhand blow. He should have uh, no problem having the uh, higher skill level over his over his opponents, and he is a defensive general, a field marshal down here. Prefer tactic too. Uh, backhand blow there as well. Uh, there's nothing here we need. We've got our command already set up. I think we had one of our navy officers that might be able to pick something. Uh, Franz von Hipper. I'm pretty sure Hipper is the... Yeah, he's uh, he's got the main fleet. And ground pounder wouldn't be a bad one. Uh, mine sweeper would be okay as well. Let's uh, let's hold off and see if we can get. Oh, we might be getting one of those destroyer leader would be very nice. A hunter, no. 
this uh, destroyer leader would be nice for the uh, damage output on them. No, we, we won't select anything there. We can build lots of things. And down here we got uh, Reinhard Shear. And same thing here. He doesn't really have any big ships. But we do have a couple of cruisers. So I think uh, we'll do that and we can select the marksman for him as well later on. Uh, same thing there. I'm pretty sure we've got the naval command all set up. Turpitz is there, yeah. Oh, we might actually want to swap out from integrated designers. Uh, it looks like they're fixing this one in the next patch as well. So it only gives uh, naval modules research speed and not naval research speed. Uh, which is good. Because it kind of makes these... Some of these other ones a little bit redundant. Or the designer at least. Yeah, we're not going to swap that out. We could do the naval refit yards actually. I think we've got, we usually have ships in repair. It's only only two ships at the moment, it's not worth doing anything. We did want to bump our submarine production up a bit though. That'll be at the uh, expense of heavy ships once they start. Actually, it's to be the repaired and they'll fill up from repairs. I um, think we can pull one from convoys. We've got a decent supply of them. I probably need... Should probably be putting more into destroyers. Probably don't need to be building the V1s anymore. Why are they still outdated then? Because we've got the V5s, which are the same thing, aren't they? No, those are even better. Okay, so we are building the V1s and v V5s. Oh, and they're going into different ones. Oh yeah, these are more uh, escort ones. And these are more offensive-minded ones. They've got the sonar and the torpedoes, so these are... These are more destroyers and these are more torpedo boats. Could of course put them on this torpedo boat hull, but no, no that's uh, the way we've set them up, so let's uh, just press play here. And we are retreating a little bit down there in Africa. Convoys. Oh, we're beating up a few convoys. Um, might be a good thing here that to move into the western approaches. We seem to have real trouble spotting our submarines. Managed to sink six convoys here in the Danish belt from switching over the ships there as well. Okay, so we're done with industrial complex. And I think uh, this one will give us, it's over here, uh, max factories, which of course is very nice. Equipment conversion might be a good one to do. Yeah, uh, oil production is from fuel gain per oil, that's a nice one to have. And resource efficiency of course too. It's a very long one, but I think it's... I got until... There we can probably... yeah, let's, uh, let's do the oil production. It's not that much oil, but it's a little bit. And we are using more and more and more oil, so... Okay, but this is actually a quite good time to show the interception thing. Because we got 70 of them and go here from Dover, or Pas de Calais. Over Dover and uh, into Northern England. And then we got these stationed here in... Uh, uh, well, close to Arnhem. And they are attacking Southern England. And so this... Uh, these 100 are attacking southern England and these 70, they're just passing through. And uh, these fighters actually get to intercept them all down here in southern England. And they've got... Uh, they've got 100 probably set to interception in the English Channel or something. That are also intercepting here. And that's the uh, 
amount in brackets. And they've got a 15% error detection, so they can spot about 15% of our aircraft that are coming in and re reduced by the other things there. And so by doing it this way, having all of our aircraft flying over, more of our well, Zeppelins in this case can actually bomb southern England. And some of them actually get through to bomb northern England as well. So that's nice. It doesn't look like we are doing that much damage though. They are, look here at uh, buildings damaged, enemy buildings bombed. Let's see, we do, do bomb a little bit, but over the last month we've been, uh, or, yeah, over the, uh, it looks like over the last year since we started our bombing campaign, we've bombed almost half a factory. So they're not doing that big of a difference, but they are tying up 500 British fighters in uh, England. That, that's good. Uh, that's 500 fighters that are not fighting us in France, of course. Still a little bit... Uh, don't really know why we don't have any air power going here. Because our fighters should be providing uh, quite a lot of air superiority. I might be able to move. These ones don't have range for everything, but we move them down there. Uh, recon, yeah. And those are flying from there. These are over our own territory. We can probably move these off now. That's, uh, well, I can't really do very much with them, can we? There is a decisive lack of I see they're bombing us with loads of airships here too. And we're not managing to shoot them down. Uh, these fighters we have in Poland need to move up. Um, we don't have a front line to move them up on. Yeah, we need to capture Lvov. If we move them down... Can probably keep them down here and in Galatia. Might be a better place for them than uh, in Poland that there's no fighting going on at all in. I'm unsure if these wings are actually doing any anything useful here. Okay, so we have another rail begun. Let's uh, let's move up here towards uh, this front here. And well, yeah, we've got supply hubs in Lvov, so we want to grab that one. And the same thing with Lutsk, Minsk, and Vilna, Novna. And we will uh, stage an attack here on Vilna. It should be an easy one. I think the same thing here. We move forward a bit. Same thing here. And moving into this direction, I think. Can we move there? Yes, we can. No, I want to move there then. And can we move into the forest here? I should be able to. And these are mountains I'd rather not go into. But the forest here is uh, completely within our reach. And where is our supplies coming from here? Oh, we are so above the supply limit in this area of the front. It's from Nice and from Multi. If we hover over it, we should be able to see the worst parts. Is that a level 1? No, that's a level 5 connection. That's a level 3, okay. That shouldn't really make a big difference. So if we 
Our supplies should be coming through Budapest probably. Let's see where we have uh, we've got Berlin here. We've got a level four going down here to Prague, and then uh, from Prague we've got level four all the way. Well, not really all the way. Yeah, we've got four coming down to Vienna, and then there's a level four going to Budapest. So I'm thinking if we bump this railway up to level four. And probably this mountain railway. I think that's going to be easier than to go around. Since this one is at level 1 as well. I want to bring that one up to level 4. That's a big construction project. And let's bring this one up to 4. This one and this one. I mean, we'd probably want to build them in the other direction. Let's put that one up higher. And that should bring level 4 supply from Berlin at least up here. And also from uh, Vienna. Now for our own front lines we have... We've got loads of level 5 railways up here actually. Which direction are we taking from Berlin? We probably want to use this as our main supply corridor. And level 3 is out here. Let's just make sure that we have these set to upgrade as well. That's level 4. And then there's a level 5 railway up, up this direction. And then we'll just have to adjust them as they go. That will be level 4 all the way down here at least, to towards Lvov. I probably want to bring these up just a little bit as well. Uh, we do need to be still building military factories though. Uh, drag and drop really made a big difference here. I think something like that. And we'll have uh, one line just building the military factories up at the top so we don't fall behind too much on that. Because we are lacking a lot of different materials. There's not that many howitzers. But we are in the negative on our balance as well. We are losing. Yeah, here we go. That's a new week. Uh, artillery looks like it's really bad though. Uh, China is going to war again. Our deficit of infantry equipment has grown even larger. Which of course is not a good thing. We need to get these tanks in the field too, so let's, uh, let's cut back a little bit there, I think. I'll we'll go up to 12 instead. We need to start pouring more factories into the guns, and that's why we're keeping these old guns in production too. Well, they're getting here now. They're probably missing mostly tanks at this point. They haven't received a single tank yet. That was... Uh, Sad. But they haven't received their manpower either, so. And we keep going towards Cayenne. I might be able to keep punching forward here. Okay, so we're gonna need to take Paris to move our artillery, railway artillery up. Can move the artillery down one tile, I think. It should be helpful against Paris. Let's see if we can cross the river here. Uh, not that division, but those two. And we can take Troyes. We have managed to push south here. Not in there just yet. So let's try and finish off that encirclement. That shouldn't be a, any bigger issues. Could have actually used that railway gun down here. It looks like we didn't capture the railway gun they had stationed up here in the mountains. Must have been destroyed in the process. We do have a couple of 
really good infantry divisions down here. They look like they are in full supply. And let's see if we can grab Venice from them. Venice, of course, is the supply hub. They do have Verona here, which is also a supply hub. So they most likely won't be out of supply. But if we manage to take uh, Venice, that would be a good victory for us. And we need some recon aircraft down here. But I don't think there's any airports in the Balkans at all. We do want them as close to possible on the front lines. Let's build one there. I think we send this one up to the top. Yeah, that'll be fine. The airports are quick, even if it's mountains. Uh, we might be able to actually take Lvovna. We have at least three divisions. And two more that I can support from across the river. And we are pinning the uh, the backside of the city. It would be nice if we could cross over into there. And I push up towards Minsk as well. And that would be a... Kovno would be a very good victory as well. And that airport. If we can take Vilna Airport, we can move some fighters up here to the Baltic States. We might actually be able to use the fighters from Germany if we manage to push, because they must be basing out of here somewhere. And Hunan has capitulated. That's one of the Chinese provinces. Let's see if we can't make a push here on this mountain tile. There's our airport. Let's see if we have some airplanes we can move down there. We've got all of these in France and we probably want to keep them there. But I think we'll just have to deal with some... These aren't doing very much in at, at home here anyway, so let's move them up this way. Let's see if we can take the Baltic coastline here. Uh, it might be a good idea to get the Russian spread a little bit thinner. Uh, we probably need one of you guys still staying here. that way. That should be good. We managed to take Lemberg. And uh, here I think we also want to push across. And close the supply hub to this front line is not Stanislavov. This is also usually a really hard area to supply and you can see them struggling here as well. And we've got Vintusha and then it's a Lemberg that we capitulated. Or that we conquered as Lvov. I'm thinking if we can cross the river here and Hejaz has capitulated too. That should be in uh, on the Arab Peninsula. If we cross here we might be able to push up towards Stanislavov. I'll just keep going there. And see if we can take Odessa as well. I think we want to start by moving across here and here. And let's push on Odessa at the same time. Let's get them initiating the combats and we will use our ordinary divisions to bolster up the attacks. That should be no problem whatsoever to break across. It looks like we are We'll be taking this one home as well. We've got the air superiority bonus here as well. That reduces their defense by whopping. Yeah, there we go, 14% during uh, daytime. During nighttime, not a lot happens. Right, it looks like it's 
That's a little bit tough to knock them out from there. See if we can't put some more boots into that combat. Right, there we go. That means we've got four divisions in circle there. That's really good news. And we will keep pushing here. And I think it's about time to start our assault on Paris as well. Let's just make sure that we knock that out. And if you're able to push into Sheerberg, and one of your divisions go up that way. I want you up on this side of the river. Some support from that direction. Okay, so we have 27 of our medium tanks in. I think we will let them be here for just a little bit longer. Let's see what kind of supplies they manage to scrounge up. Yeah, okay, so let's, uh, we've got four divisions here and two more there. And they can assault Paris. These are strong divisions, they are the artillery divisions, most of them. Okay, so we have broken through here. I think we want to add some support behind that attack. And we will have them encircled now too. I can attack them from another direction. Anyone on this front line, I want to... Okay, so where are we at here? Those are the motorized divisions, that's fine. And this is two more motorized, that's weird. Because I don't think we want to have have them assigned to this front line. We still want them to support this attack. And that's the way we want to have it. And that should be fine. I think these are all chief of army. Yeah, we got a trait. Okay, so Ruppest von Bayern. It's gotten a trait. He is the field marshal for our offensive forces. I can see that by unyielding defender and offensive doctrine, of course, too. He's got logistics wizard. That thorough planner would be good in this scenario, actually. And as would, of course, infantry expert. Now it's on these traits, I think it's a quarter, so two and a half percent of this gets applied to all of these divisions. That's quite good. And we can also have a better recovery rate, which of course is very good on the attack. Or better reinforced rate, which is also good on the attack. And I think, uh, yeah, we'll take charismatic. I think that's going to be the the biggest bang, and then organization, and then infantry expert. Okay, so these need to help out this way. Uh, and the assault on Paris is going really well. Let's uh, keep pushing down this direction. Towards Dijon. And Bescanon. See if we can take uh, most of Bouillon. I've almost taken all of Normandy. Uh, this of course is going to mean more ports to guard. I think we... We're probably running out of port garrison divisions. I've got them... I think we've got them in... Uh, yeah, those are the ones we've got stationed here on the... Alpine border too, so we can always move these out. Assault on Venice is not going too well. It's a slow fight. Uh, same with here in the mountains in Greece. Now we're fighting four divisions. We've got six of our own and uh, a railway gun. That should be fine. We're moving the new one up. 
I think we need to widen this gap a little bit. It's getting uh, too tight. And I keep pushing in there as well. Let's see if we can move up on Minsk a little bit. And it's about time we move across here, I think. Oh, yeah, I go across there and... Yes, they put in memo for now, I think. Of course, all of these offensives is what's costing us all this equipment. It does look that like the deficit is falling now. And the artillery deficit is about the same. I think it was 1.7 when we started, but we've been about 1.5 below all the time. And of course, the tanks should be we're getting there. One per day now, almost. That'll be easier once we start building the light tanks as well in... I think this should be 100 days, 120 days left. Oh, and soon we get the bombers too. And switch out our... Our production for blimps. Alexandre Ribot asks for peace. After losing control of the front, France is no longer able to fight against the German Empire. In order to avoid to spread the war and devastation into the country, the command of the French army decided to request a truce between the Tante and the German Empire. So we could uh, allow the French surrender and the war will be over. No idea what actually happens if we press this one. And uh, this is not the end. Well, we've captured Paris and uh, it's probably spread a... Or, run into the uh, suburbs here and with a cabinet so we've, uh, we've got the French almost here they are 57% towards capitulation we do need to push a little bit further to actually knock them out hopefully Russia will be uh, imploding sometime soon they should be getting a civil war I'm not actually sure when that kicks off but they should be getting a civil war once we get far enough into their territory. Uh, Italy is... We just need to be able to actually move some troops down and we should be able to deal with Italy quite quickly. And then of course there is the British on the other side of the pond. I would expect taking the... Uh, taking the truce would be... Uh, pre-war borders and... Uh, it would be status quo building up for an yet another big world war. Now of course we don't want that. We want to subjugate these four countries and we want to expand Germany into the territories that are rightfully ours and to make sure that we have our peace uh, place in the sun of course down here in Africa and that the uh, Entente won't be fighting against us anymore and it will be dismembered we need to build up some new friendships down here. So uh, this is not the end. We have not beaten our enemies and we do have them on the run. We have the upper hand on the western front. We have the upper hand on the eastern front. And uh, the two southern fronts are stalled out because we just don't have the resources to devote to them. Uh, we can actually see what's going on down here. Uh, we can if we move down some recon aircraft. Down here in Italy, as I said, there is no reason to expect that we couldn't win once we move up something that's a little bit stronger than these port garrison divisions with their coastal artillery guns so no this is not the end germany did not accept the surrender of france wilhelm ii announced that there will be no truce with the french german empire intends to finally defeat the french threat the world will not be the same and the fall of paris the streets of Paris have been almost cleared of civilians and is eerily silent. A few, only those too ill, old or stubborn to clear out, have come out of their homes and shops to see thousands upon thousands of German soldiers march through the heart of France. Only decades after the fall of Paris in the Franco-Prussian War, onlookers are horrified to see that France has failed yet again. Paris has fallen with the German flag proudly waving over the fallen nation. 
The French defense made serious mistakes that caused the breakthrough of the German troops to Paris. Germany achieved her goal and the war apparently will end with the defeat of the Entente. Another victory for the fatherland. So we will clear this out. Looks like Sheerberg is putting up some stiff resistance. That's the British here again, of course. And the British have equipment for their troops. Okay, let's uh, make sure that we widen up this front a little bit so we can get some supplies down. Would be nice to take the railway here through the Le Mans to Rennes. Let's see if we can't uh, make that happen. Oh, so we've got some uh, Renault tanks here. And another one here. Let's uh, engage the It's actually Japanese tanks. No, it's not. It's uh, French tanks. Uh, for some reason I thought that was a Japanese flag with the things going on. There's so few of them though. If you look at the strength part below. It looks like we are making... We managed to capture Dijon. I just want to push on down there. We do want to kind of close this pocket out to relieve those troops. And our Panzer Division, yeah, we're going to be missing still 100 tanks, yes. It's not been that many days since we last checked. How are we doing for our... Yeah, we're still constructing them. We've got, yeah, we're building the mountain pass here now in, uh, in Moldova. Okay, let's uh, keep pushing along the railway. That's an empty tile. Of course, we're going to go for it. And we are spreading our lines very thin now. But our opposition is so weak that it shouldn't really matter unless the British arrive in force. Uh, we really should be using some... Let's uh, put these up here. We shouldn't be using our motorized divisions for capturing a city. That's not really what they are meant for. That's four of them, that should be sufficient. And we have a new trait down here. And uh, as much as Scavenger is nice to have, I think the Fortress Buster would probably be a good one to have. He is our artillery general, isn't he? No, he's not. He's just one of the ordinary ones. It would have been so much better if we got it on on Galowitz, who's got the artillery expert. And yeah, this, this is a hard one. The engineering itself is of course really good. Um, yeah, let's, let's hold off on that one for a little bit. Uh, let's make sure that we actually grab this and free up all of these troops and looks like our no not this one we need to refocus our motorized divisions and they don't have a goal the new goal is breast of course let's take the entire uh, north coast of france here and breton and let's keep on going in this direction we have three divisions here that are standing still. Let's make sure that we punish them for trying to attack us here. And uh, let's move forward there. I think this is worth it. We are currently attacking this tile, so shouldn't be any bigger issues with knocking them out from there. Maybe we can even crush a division here. Yeah, I don't, don't think this assault on Venice is going too well. If we'd had our artillery divisions with the howitzers, we might have been able to break through there. And is there a naval invasion going on? Well, this is just naval combats. Southern Balkans. Okay, they are trying to... There's one Australian division that's trying to naval invade here. It's a weird spot to choose for a naval invasion. Uh, this would have been a much better spot. 
with a port and access to another port quickly. Uh, this shouldn't be any issues for us whatsoever. Uh, it looks like we... well, we'll see. It's a long time still left on this combat. Yeah, they got two fully orged divisions there. So presumably we're not going to be able to punch through there with what we got. And we let's uh, set the location for these in Berlin. Are they on high priority or? No, they're just on middle priority. Good. Okay, so we decrypted the cipher for the UK. And uh, well, I don't think we need to do the French one. Let's do the Italian one. Or we could do the French one as well. And we're not going to be using that one. Not yet at least. Let's see if we can punch through there now. going that way too and keep pushing along the railway that should be fine it looks like we might be able to kick them out of Sherberg now yeah they're losing divisions here we can see the small helmets popping up there okay so let's move this front line up Do we have here this is our uh, basically defensive one I might actually be better off with the uh, recovery rate here too actually I was thinking maybe offensive doctrine for the plus one attack that's a really good one to have and we are actually on the offensive here too so yeah let's grab that and I don't think these are... No, those have been there all the time. I wish I could right-click them or I'll say that this Chief of Army one, I don't want this one to display down here. I right. keep pushing there. We'll just use all of these divisions there. And let's keep pushing toward Nantes and Lorient. And let's push up towards Brest there as well. Oh, and here we go. David Lloyd becomes the Prime Minister. Following the resignation of Herbert Henry Asquith, David Lloyd George has become the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. So there we go. There is a David Lloyd George. And uh, he dislikes Germany for whatever reason. Probably not the last literal PM. Well, well. But uh, with this here, it's the end of this episode. We've made great advances into France. We've made some advances into... Uh, we've actually created a, almost created a pocket here. A really big one too. So let's, uh, let's push hard so we can make sure that this actually happens. And we want to go that direction. We really want to make this... Okay, so we're giving out some orders there for the next one. Let's fix this uh, front line as well. We have crossed the river here. There we go. And we have uh, captured Odessa as well. We've made absolutely no progress whatsoever in Greece. And our attack on Venice has also utterly failed. But uh, we'll take the victories we have gotten. And... Uh, I'll see you again next time. So thank you very much for watching this episode. Take care and see you then.